Dave here, how are you? You might wonder why I'm smiling as just the whole project fell off the bench as I was just filming this trailer. Anyway, here we go. Let's see if we can get it right this time. Today on the show, we will be using the Gifkins Jumbo Jig. And you can see up the top here, I've already got the pins cut on this particular one. Uh, we will do one set of pins. I've done all the rest of the dovetailing before, so you don't get bored with it. It does use the router table. It's not for a handheld router. Uh, here's the joint that I've already done, and you can see where it fell off and landed there. So that has answered a question I was thinking about. Shall I put a round over on the edge or not? Well, I'm going to have to now, aren't I? <laughs> anyway, there you go. Uh, over the back there, I've got the floor, and behind that is the surprise that I'll be showing you all at the end of the show. It's the lid. I've already built it, and it's pretty amazing. And also the stain i'm trying to match what i already have existing this is too brown this is slightly red but i think it'll be okay anyway stay tuned we'll see if we can have some more comical stuff happen see you soon dave here how are you Dave here, how are you? I guess I should have turned the ads off at the beginning of the show. I normally do do that, but my grandson dropped in and saw me just a, you know, 40 minutes or so before the show started, and I was focusing on what he was talking about. Anyway, that's my excuse. Today is the 12th of March, the second week for us into autumn. Now, I know that it's not autumn as far as the equinox and the solstices and all that kind of stuff is concerned. But in Australia, we like to do things differently. So we're in autumn and you guys, as far as we're concerned in the Northern Hemisphere, are in spring. There you go. Wait for the comments. <laughs> all right. Today on the show, today is going to be a cracker. I am so excited about today's show. I've already started on the uh, joints. And I've made a mistake already, so hopefully all the mistakes are out of the way. And the first thing we're going to do is cut the base. Now, this is a uh, faux pas from when I was doing a bench, and I'm going to use this as the base because it has all these holes. So I thought, how about we use these holes as ventilation in the floor? So I will put on the underneath of this some fly screen on the underside of the box. So it's not actually blank, so I won't be touching it, but will stop moths and bugs and things climbing around and getting up in and starting to eat the cloth in the box. So that's the plan. Towards the end of the show, I have a reveal. Now, this is something that my patrons are well aware of. Uh, I've shown them what I've been up to during the week. I'm so excited about what I've managed to achieve without ever having done it before. And it's come out bloody brilliantly, according to Cole. So for a box maker to say that, I'm so happy. All right, show you what we'll, what we'll do first is we'll cut this. I'll move that out of the way down there. And we'll switch the camera over to this one on the side. Uh, first of all, I'll, if you don't want your Google to do anything, I'm going to give a command. And it might start saying, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Hey, Google, turn the battery charger on. Wait for it. What happened over here? All right, turning on the battery charger. Now that supplies the power also for this guy here. That's why we did that. Good morning, my beautiful. How are you doing this morning? Poor old Vicky, she's away from me at the moment. She's on a little bit of a trip away and we kind of miss each other. And it's just, how crazy is that? Mid sixties and we're still in love. Go figure. All right, I'm going to put the Stanton dog locks on. I've been using the track for other things during the week, and it's just a very easy situation. Actually, I might go to Carl Camp for this one. Just to uh, show you how easy it is, slide it in there, come back to about there, screwdriver, and just a short turn. It doesn't have to be super tight. And the other end slides in that way. 
and then I just push it in against the dog at the far end, pull it back towards me here, tighten the thumb screws up, done. It's not going anywhere, it's so easy. So, so easy. All right, that's where we're gonna cut it. I've got a sustainer underneath, see that? So it's going to catch the offcut. Turn on the dusty, and then we'll do the cup. Done. And you know what? I'm hoping that I'm hoping it's going to work perfectly. There we go. And I'll just pull that back up. Put it to the side for the moment. Beautiful. This little fellow can go back over here. All right. Okay, back to this one. And move that. There we have it. Other side. That's the base. Easy. Now, I think what we'll do next is we'll cut the dovetails at the, at the router table using the jumbo uh, dovetail jig. And the great thing about the jumbo, I'll show you that here. These are the, um, the tails. So the pins go in here. And these are the dovetails, hence they look like a little dove's tail fanning out. This is a larger dovetail than his standard dovetail jig. This is the Gifkin's jig, Cole Hosey. So I can prove that by getting the camera to zoom in closer. Let me see if I can come in closer. Uh, It's not, I wonder if I've actually got rid of one of them. I think I have, I'm an idiot. Don't worry, look, I can take it over here beside it. That's sitting beside that one there. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten dovetails in this part of the toolbox that I made. And in this one I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So bigger dovetails for a bigger box makes it look more aesthetically pleasing. Move this. Yeah, wait till, wait till I show you what I've, what I've actually made during the week. I just, it blew me away. I can't believe it. I'm very excited. <sighs> All right. As I said, we'll go down to the other camera there. I'm going to, I've got a camera in camera set up and I think it will work. There we go. I'm going to spin this camera around so you'll get an overall view. And then you've got a close up of the actual dovetail jig working. So you'll see um, this side is probably going to be best. So this is where I'm going to be here working away. And you'll see me doing stuff close up. I don't have the, the uh, throat guard in the router table at the moment because there's no real need because the jig goes right across it. It spans the whole thing. And if I have this open, it allows more dust to go down. Not that much goes down there. Most of it will go in here and you'll be able to see how good the new extraction system that I've got works. So I will be putting these guys on. I've already put this on. Now the mistake I made during the week was I forgot to put the face mark, which you can't see on the small, uh, on the larger picture, but you can see it just here. The face mark to the outside. I had the face mark to the inside, so then my dado that I created here for the box bottom to sit in is now on the outside. So I had a little bit of a think about all of that, and I decided that I will put a skirting board around the outside of the, around the outside of the box. Well, basically it's a baseboard, I guess you guys in the States would call it. 
And as luck would have it, that's exactly what the bedside tables of this particular setting that I've got that I'm matching this to have already. So uh, uh, all of that work was basically for nothing. And with the data I did on the inside, on the inside I should say, it didn't have to be a stop data. It could have gone all the way through because the baseboards cover it. But look, that's one of the great things about woodwork is you can just keep on going and going and going. And if you make a mistake, just work around it. Who cares? It's your product. It's your, unless you're making it actually for someone else. Well, that's a different story. But if it's for you, you know, live and I live with it. So I'm going to put these on. Stay safe. And it will make some noise. The router always is noisy. You may want to turn it down a little bit. The dust extractor and everything will turn itself on when I do this. There we go. Now this is a very tall board. This is nearly four feet tall. So I'm going to come in. And I'm going to come across the front first. Coming across the front first because that's a climb cut and that gives me the cleaner cut. I'm going to go in halfway, come back, across, and then all the way in. Across the back. Now there's a little zag left in the middle there because it's such a deep cut. Go to the next one. Now I can see it, I'll do it a bit quicker. watch for is if you put a little bit of oil on the bearing it can tend to collect a little bit of dust and that will hold the bearing out away from the uh, the comb or the template whatever you want to call it just ever so slightly and that will make things a little bit awkward. So these are the pins that I'm cutting. I'll explain that in a bit more in a second. That's beautiful. I'm going to check the underside that I've gone through all the weight. I have. Turn this guy off. Take it out of the clamps. What do you think? There's all the pins, they're all perfect. Come back to the other camera. Spin this around.
Yeah, so what I was saying there is the, um, the focus isn't working terribly well. Give it time, it'll catch me. Got it, back again. Okay, uh, let me have a look down through here. Um, very tricksy director, Dave. Um, yes, Matthew, doing well, Matthew. Hospital for eight weeks, that's no good, somewhere in a show. King's Wings, are you doing better? I certainly hope so. I've missed out on a lot of that conversation, so we'll just let that slide. All right, now, what I was saying about the bearing on the cutter that follows the actual comb or the, the um, template on the dovetail jig, if it has a little bit of oil on it, I normally put a little bit of oil on it uh, just to keep the bearing spinning nicely and make the cutter last a long, long time, well then, you must run it for a little while on its own, just put it in the machine and turn it on. Don't put anything up against it. That will, centrifugal force will throw the oil out to the outside, turn it all off, and then give it a good wipe with a rag and then start into it again. Now you cut templates first. So, oh sorry, you cut sample boards first. And that's what I've done here to make sure that it's going to work. So I've also adjusted this one a little bit. Yeah. Actually, that one is not going to go in there. Maybe it's the other one that I've got. Ah, that could have been my first. First is the templates. Give me a second. Yeah. Look, it's working. <laughs> it works. The thing is, the longer you leave the joint after you've cut it, and you've got some humidity, things will swell and contract a little bit. So, Cole, why aren't you on the golf course teeing off? Now I'm going to put a little bit of tape on this because when I do the glue up, I don't, I don't want to have any squeeze out on the inside because I don't want to have to clean it off. I've already sanded this down to 220. I don't want to have to do any more on the inside. Always a good idea. Sand all your parts prior to assembly. Isn't that right, Cole? Cole will tell you. Cole's just finished one of his shows this morning, a project that's taken eight weeks. Beautiful. See that? Perfect. Straight down. And that will just act to help me up. All right. Now, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I've done all, I've got all these uh, bits of tape and everything all the way around, so that's all good. I'm going to check that this works properly. I've got another board out here and I'll tell you another little trick on big jobs like this, on big joints, like wide, what I do is because pine does absorb and, not going, it's raining, oh bugger, because pine does absorb and release moisture quite easily, it's, you know, it's a timber that moves around a fair bit. So before I do the glue up, I make sure that I have the board sitting on the outside where the face mark is. So just here is the face mark. And I set it down on the table in the workshop like that. Because then when I go to put the, um, the timber on the jig, I want it to have a little bit of a cup in the board. So I want it to have a bit of a cup like this. So when I put it, in the jig, it's pulling. So depending on the moisture content, I should have really said there, if it's wet outside and humid, put the face that you want to absorb moisture up. Okay, so in that situation, having the, the um, face mark facing out, I think that's the way that I've got to do it. Let me have a look. Yes, face mark facing out, away from me. That's the mistake I had. I've had it facing towards me. Then I would have, thinking about this, the opposite side, I would want to absorb moisture. 
So I would have face mark facing down, exactly as I said at the beginning. Then this side will absorb moisture and it will do this as it's sitting on the board. Of course, the fibers on this side will absorb the air. The underneath, the air's not getting to it. So it stays standard and then you'll get this little cup. When you put it in, you put it on the clamps and the clamps will pull it all the way back and it will support the center. It'll push the center hard up against the jig. And it works well. I've tried it. Okay. Uh, Monday meetup. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Okay, so let's put this one together. I'm going to do a quick check that it fits. That one's going to go on there. Oh, look at that. Look at that. It's, it's going to go on perfect. I'm not going, to, I'm not going to put it on all the way. So I'm going to, first of all, Put this one, and I'm going to put this one into it. I'm waffling, I know, but remember, this is live, and it's just fun. So this one, already done. You can have a look at how nice the joints come up. How nice are they? It's a beautiful jig. And I'm going to get some glue, and I'm going to put it here, and I'm going to slide the base in, and I put just a dab of glue there. And that's going to hold everything square for me as I'm putting it all together. So I'm going to base in. I'm going to slide this one this way. The pins are going in this direction. And then at the end, so then I can pull it up nice and tight and just leave it like that. It's all supported. And then I'm going to put the end on. That way, I'm not having the glue sitting there for a long time. I'll glue that joint and pull it up tight. Because these are so big, you know, it really is, it, I think it's a very important thing to do. So I'll get my glue and some brushes and a piece of wood to mix the glue up on. We'll be 20 past. We're flying along. This is going to be such a, a good show, I think, I hope. Fingers crossed. If you like what I'm doing, don't forget to subscribe on the, on the click the link. And then when you click that subscribe button, Click the, when it comes up, says subscribe, click it again, and you'll see there's four options come up. One is a little bell with all notifications. Click that one, and then you'll get it. I had someone say to me, Dave, I've, I've, I've subscribed, but I've got no idea when your shows are on, because, you know, how do you do it? I said, well, you've got to click the ring that bell and make sure all notifications, and then you'll be away. When did you cut those joints, Dave? Ah, would be cupping also with the joints being tighter in the middle of the pa panel correctly. So when I do the glue up, they'll pull. I cut those joints two days ago, Cole. Are you going to tell me I should cut them all again? I think we'll be all right. I'll do a test. Before I put the glue on, I'll do a test to make sure that that one's going to go in there. That was my, my sample cuts, Cole. Oh, it's magic. It's absolutely beautiful. Put that there. Here we go. A little bit of glue down here. Actually, I think I would have preferred you went and played golf, Cole. <laughs> a little bit of glue down there. Not too much. Doesn't really need a heap. Um, a brush. Spread it around a bit. A little bit here in the middle, Cole says. Just a little bit in the middle, Dave, is fine. You can't really see what's happening up the end there, can you? Putting a bit more there so I can grab it with a brush. Yeah, so you always do some sample cuts. And I think that's what I had there, Cole, is the the cuts that I did at the beginning that weren't working properly. So let's throw the, uh, the base in. Uh, this way up. I'm going to put the ratty side to you. This, the side you're going to see here is on the bottom. This is the side we'll see in the box. How nice. Maybe the 
other direction, Dave. No. Nope. Why has that happened? Um, I'm going to move this whole thing along the other direction without knocking over that cup that Peter got for me. Because we don't need it hanging over the edge anymore. So that's nice. That's looking good. Looking very good. Brush and glue. This isn't really a good angle for you. I'm going to go to the other camera. I'm going to, I've got one on the side here. When I find the mouse. Things take off and then they're lost and gone forever, of course. Found it. It's under the bench. Gotcha. So we'll go to the other camera. Got it. Perfect. Always do test cuts. Uh, yeah. Ron, late, have a note. Kyle, new 1002 uses for a Stanton bench. <laughs> Indeed. It was under the Stanton bench. All right. I'm going to, um, I'm going to use some glue. I'm going to put the glue on a stick. Remember, I've sanded all the inside. I haven't sanded the bottom of that because it's just the bottom. This will all be stained. And I, th I think I made comment the other day about the kind of stain I'm going to use. It's actually a Jarrah stain. And I was concerned it was a little red, but I'm going to finish, I was going to finish with the Hestapol interior satin, but I'm going to use the Whittles hard wax oil satin because that gives me a bit of a yellow up. You can see on my toolbox that it, it actually has yellowed up. I'm going to do this before too much mucking around. I'll come around to this side for this lot. Now I was watching <clears throat> Mr. Cosby, oh Cosman I should say, Mr. Cosman, sorry about that. And he was saying that he doesn't glue the end grain on the dovetail joints. What's your feelings on that, Cole? Are you, are you an end grain gluer or not? But then I saw him do an, a recent video and he did, Rob Cosman is his name, and I saw him do a recent video and he said, you know, this is the time I actually will use on end grain. And I thought, well, fair enough. So I also would use on end grain. Make sure we get all of them covered. I'm going to have my back to you for a second while I just do the insides of these ones. And I'm going to glue both parts of the joint. I'm going to glue the dovetails and I'm also going to do the pins. So you guys are allowed to chat while I do this. Done. Okay, so it is, I've got to make sure I've got the right end. And so it is this end that I've got to put the glue on. <clears throat> I don't want to get it on the box, so I'm going to just do it from here. Another use of the Stanton bench for leaning things against. More glue. just about out so I've got to be careful that I've got enough for the rest of the joints. Yeah, Cole's aware of the, uh, of the thing that I made during the week as well. I just had to tell a couple of people. So my patrons knew and Cole knows and Vicky knows. They're all sworn to secrecy. I got another little trick, Cole. I don't know if, you've, uh, if you'll be happy with me doing this, but I've actually made some calls, not telephone, calls to pull the joints up tight. You know, I, I cut the, my sample pins, I've trimmed them down a little bit. Oh, this is gonna be so nice. It's gonna be a beautiful box. I have trimmed them down in height and I use them as a call for clamping. 
So it pushes hard in against the dovetail to push it down hard to seat it to this part that I'm gluing right at the moment. I'll show you in a second when I put the clamps on. I might have to go to Type Bond 3 for the rest of it. This is Type Bond 2. I'm using Type Bond 2 because it's, uh, it's a clearer finish. Here we go. Uh, bit of glue in here, of course. That's going to be plenty. You can understand why I'm not gluing all of them up in one go. And in we go. I hope. I'm hoping that the base is going to let it go in. I think it is. Bugger, it's holding it up just a little. That stuffed me up for a second. Luckily, I have a jointer. I'm going to pull this out before it sets off. Got it. Yeah, I've got it just before it tacked off properly. Gotcha. Quickly run it over the joint to take a mill off it. What do we say? Mistakes and all. That's okay. That's better. And I've got to check that the other end's going to work. Actually, that's good. That's all good. Check this end. Yep, plenty. Height. Height is good. Excellent. Nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry about. A little bit of glue there again. And now up there. So you don't have much time. Not much time at all. Ha! What would the show be like if I didn't have little things like that happen. Boring. In you go. Up there. Down there. All good. This one. Up we go. And there. Clamp is what I need. Actually, I need just to get around the back here and pull it up towards me. I'm going to grab a clamp to help. And if my own silly fault, I'm going to tip it over on its side like so. Get back in, like so, and then that glue is really starting to tack off. Doing it this way can be good or can be terrible. <laughs> I think that's going to be good there. I'll turn it around so I can see what's happening and you guys can see what's happening.
good. Clamp at the ready. I'll save it, don't you worry about that. I know what it is. I know what it is. It wasn't any of that at all. It wasn't designed to have the floor go in at that stage. Remember, 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 remember. Pull it back out just to... We'll pull the floor out totally. <laughs> We're going to do that. What was... It was catching on the end of the ho... um, incomplete dado. Like the dado wasn't... It was a stopped dado. This will now go in and you'll all go... Wow, didn't that go in nicely? That's the plan. Come on. There she goes. The reason it's looking hard is because the glue has started to tack off. This went in perfectly just before. And also it's been swelling the joint. Notice I'm going up and down to bring it in evenly. Now I'm going to go to the inside totally, past the tails. And we're going to put the clamp on it in a second. Yep, now put the clamp on it now. These guys here are the things I was talking about. And if I put it up that way, that's going to act as a call to pull each individual piece in. <laughs> All the fun of it. Move that across a little bit further. I'm working left handed. I should have come in right handed. That's better. Much better. All right. Mallet. Yeah, that was the problem. Oh, that's just beautiful. I'm going to put another clamp on that for the moment, just while it, just to pull it in tight. And then, so I'm going to have them back to you for a second here. Now I can pull that one off and go to the top. I'll show you the joint. It looks bloody lovely. See that? All the way down, it's nice and tight because these coils here are pushing hard on, this, on the dovetail. Now, ordinarily, you wouldn't really need to do that, but the problem has been that I had a little thing happen and I thought to myself, I've got a problem there um, and I need to fix it quickly. Now these don't need to stay here now, but I will put the base in. And I'm just going to check the other end of the, the box is going to allow me to slide it in. I'm just going to have to hit that with the... Um, I can take these off. They're not going to go anywhere. Nothing will beat me. 
<laughs> That's the way you got to do it. Like, if you come into a problem, fix it. Done. Beautiful. Okay, now I've got to work the other end. So I'll turn this around a bit. And I've got to put the base in, and that will help to make sure that it's going to be nice and tight. Or, sorry, square. Part of the part of doing the square. A little bit more glue on these for the tenth time. Come on, I really do need some more glue. One. This side. I'm going to have to go the other style of glue. Slide it in. Actually, if I go in sideways, that'll work to a certain point, and then lower it down. Like it's got those holes in it. Come back to there and slide. There she goes. That's pretty nice. There you go, you can see the floor is in. And that's looking good. Is this part here? I'm going to knock that off with a chisel. So we don't have that issue. Or should I? No, that should be fine. It was on the other side. That's right. Okay. Pushing it back. Cole, what's that? It should, not, should be able to get enough spread of the sides without breaking anything. <laughs> my Thor, the Thor hammer, Thor's hammer is right here. But the only problem with the Thor's hammer is that it's, it's a very hard surface. And if I hit slightly off, I'm going to put a dent. It's got to be perfectly flat. This is for actually hitting something like a tool. Don't use this to try and tap that up. That's, uh, hence, I use a rubber mallet because it's much softer on, on the timber. And the timber is a softwood being pine. Okay, so now we can now we can relax and go and get more glue. That end is all done. I have got I don't have to worry about that anymore and I can quickly put the square on it to check. And if it's out, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> I'm just going to keep going. But I'll tell you what. That's perfect. Abs absolutely perfect. I'll show you on Carl Cam. Uh, when we when we finish off, I'm going to use the other glue. That one's had it. There's nothing left in it. I'm going to have to use the tight bond three. It's going to get stained. I don't think it's really going to be such an issue. This is how you stir it. Did you know that? You can do this if you want to, but that shocks everything much better. All right, brush and a little board. It's so much fun. Even little things like that, they make you think real quick. And I think that's good exercise. Okay, type bond three gives me more gluing time as well. More, more, um, more time to get in there and get everything done. So, tails, let's start at the top because if I drip anything, it will drop to the next point. Remember, I've got that big reveal to show you as well. It's the lid uh, and it's, it's just magic. I'm so happy with it. Now, if I don't get enough glue on the undersides of these pins, it doesn't matter. The reason being, I'm going to be putting glue on the on the other one as well, on the end. So I will, I will catch it all there. Cole only glues the outside. Oh, I just had a moment there. I thought, oh God, I've made them the wrong way around. But I think it's okay. So if you can work through the tips that I give you and work out what's rubbish and <laughs> what's good, well, that's fine. I'm, I'm happy. 
One of the good things about this kind of stuff is you'll see me make a mistake and you go, and when, when you come to do something like this and you start down that track, you think, bloody hell, that's, what, that's exactly the same thing that happened to Dave. <laughs> and hopefully you'll be able to work your way around that. Okay. The, uh, glue all of these guys. I think if I just sit it there, that will be handy. Yeah, it's that part there. That's the part that stuffed me up. Anyway, but oh, the good thing about this also is when I'm in here doing these ones, I can do both ends and then tip it upside down and do the other sides instead of just doing the underside blindly. Turn it around. Now, this is going to be fun because I've got two, <laughs> two lots of joint to contest with, but I think, I think we're going to be okay. You don't want them tight when you first cut them. They've got to be a nice fit. Otherwise, you're going to end up in trouble. So roll it right over. Now I can get to the, the top side. I'm not turning around watching what's happening. Lucky I had a jointer, isn't it? If I didn't, doing that with a hand plane would have taken me a, a substantial amount of time. Yeah, so the lid, the lid is just, I love it. I absolutely love it. And you'll understand when I show you. It's actually in the background. I don't know if you can see it, but it's sitting there waiting in the wings. I'm not putting it on today. I'm, I'm gonna, I have to go and have a pill and a lie down after the show. <laughs> after that little bit of a hiccup. But that's all right. We got past it. Nearly done. And also, I need to put a little bit on here. See how we go. All right, moment of truth. Make sure I'm pointing up the right way and in. So it's got to go there and there. And I will give it a tap with the mallet. Going in perfectly there with the mallet. So I'm slowly going to bring it in, and then I'm going to go to the other side. And there. I've got to be careful I don't work one point more than the other, otherwise I could split the board. And I do not want to split it. Other side. Closing up nicely. Now my calls. Swing it around. Which way up? It was that way, wasn't it? I go right in the center. I'm gonna, I'm gonna work from this end because it's a whole lot easier for me being right-handed to do it this way. <laughs> so nice. So, so nice. I'm, when I do the other one, I'll bring the camera up so you can see it right on it. And watch it, just pull the, the glue right at the end. Oh, so good. Actually, while I'm pulling the bottom one up, I'll do it. You can see it 
at the bottom. Tip that down a little and we'll spin it around a bit more. Okay, so it's just here. I'll take this one off and lower it down. Come on, back you go. See the glue screws out there? Now that doesn't need to stay there. They're fine. They're not going anywhere. I've got to tighten up the other side now. Right. Now how many of you people out there were thinking, he's stuffed it. He's not going to get out of this one. Even MacGyver couldn't get out of this. <laughs> so much fun. I like, the, I like the pressure of these things when they... I'm just checking that the bottom's fine there. Right. So here we are. We've got this joint here. And it's not closed up. I'll bring this in here. Move that out of the way. And you'll be able to see just here. These are not closed. So, calls in just a touch. Uh, this way up. All I've done, this is my sample piece, and what I've done is I've cut the end off it so that it would come in kind of along it. There we go. And that's pushing these back to there. Don't keep talking, David. Get the thing done. We're going to have more trouble. There'll be more tears. Um, I'm going to work left-handed this time. And I'm going to back the clamp off a little bit on the screw, otherwise I'm going to end up having nowhere, no tension to, to pull up on it. No screw left, I should say. There we go. Slowly going. It's there it's starting to go. Now you watch. See that? Perfect. Absolutely bloody perfect. And across the top, we'll do the same. Make sure that I've got it in the right spot. And these, this is the one up. These are good. This one here, this one need to tighten up. You watch. I don't know if you can see them. Let's tip that up a little and come in closer. You watch. Let's see if we get a little squeeze. There's the squeeze. See it coming? Beautiful. Okay, I'm going to back it off a little bit. I don't want to keep the pressure on it too much. Take it down to the bottom and pull the last one. Yeah. Watch. There she goes. Beautiful. All right. Put that to the side. That up there like that. I can take these off now. And the bottom one. And then we'll have a look. So nice. so, so nice. They've held really well. And we'll get the, this guy and we'll come back over here. Actually, I might just take the box off in a second. We'll go to Carl Cam first, I think. Let's see if I've got Carl Cam there. So you can see the pattern down there. And let's have a look at the corners. Let's see if it's square. Okay. That looks pretty good to me. And this one. Yes. And the one we've just done. Slide along to the other end. Yes, beautiful. And this one. Beautiful. And what I can do also is a measure. I'm brave doing this one. Let's see. I can't measure to that, so I'm going to have to measure from the point 
to the inside because this is the side I crunched. And also I'm just thinking that's 1170. The other thing is I've sanded one of those joints off and I haven't sanded the other one. So this one's going to sit proud. Yep, 1168. I think that'll be in the, in the, um, in the sanding. That's all right. I'm going to just clamp that up a little bit more down the other end. Actually, that's sitting quite nicely. I don't have to. It'll be fine. Um, there, that's that one. And this one. The pins are just ever so slightly short on that one, but that's okay. I think it'll be all right. That's also why I got, yeah, the pins were just slightly shorter on that one. Um, that's, this is the one I did today, I think. And they're perfect. Just the right amount of overhang. All right, who wants to see what I've done? This is the lid. I'm gonna put it up on top. And you can see it. like so, it's going to hang out the edge ever so slightly. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Now, can you see this? Timber hinge. I built a timber hinge. Can't believe it. I'm going to hold my hand on the back and you watch. And it stays there. Close it. Look at, stand it on the floor. I will in a minute. I will in a minute. Okay, we'll go to another camera. And you can see, when I get the other camera working, there it is, this one. What do you think of the hinge? Now, I've done a video on how to build the hinges. It's not finished yet. It's very close to being finished. You watch. Little squeaky noise. I'll, I'll take the, the piece off and then what I'll do is I'll put the box on the floor like Cole suggested. So nice. Magic. And one other thing I need to do, I need to measure across the top, make sure we don't have any 448. And the bottom again 448 in the middle 448 perfect i love it okay sounds like your joints when you get up in the morning okay now the reason this is the back can you see the hinge there it is right here so what's what's happened now is i could have put it on the back of the box like that and just made this wider. But I'm not going, because then that would look really neat across the back. But I'm not going to, because remember, I wanted that 100 millimeter width, this 100 mil here, so that the lid is going to be the right height. See that? Down she goes. And also, I've created the female section of the hinge behind the knuckle to work at 15 degrees can't go past. There's no need for a stay or a stop or a strap or anything. This is the inside of the box here. Now, you're talking about the noise. Fine. I needed to have it a very tight fit all the way through as I was building it. Now, when I come to stain it, what I'm going to do is I will take the pin out. Now, the pin is a quarter inch dowel. And I'll explain more about that in the, um, in the video. And when I take the dowel out, I'm going to put it in the lathe 
and I'm going to spin it up and I'm going to sand it down to around about five and a half millimeters diameter. Two reasons. All of that sand will disappear. I'm also going to stain and put a finish on these as two, <coughs> pardon me, two separate items. They'll be pulled apart. <coughs> Coffee. It's just been going so long without talk, without drinking. <clears throat> you like the squeak baby actually our front gate makes a squeak and I was going to put some oil on it but I think I'm going to leave it like that because it's a bit of a heads up someone's coming so when, when, I, um, when I put it all back together I think that squeak is going to disappear <clears throat> just a few motions it'll wear itself out that squeak just about gone now. What do you think? And then from the back, have a look how neat it is. You want the sound? I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'll finish the video on this. I will put a link up here. In, the, in this actual video, when I've got the, the, the video on this finished. I'll also do a very, very short, maybe a one minute grab of the video and put that up on Instagram and Facebook. So if you wanna see how I did it, it's just terrific. The hinge is magic. I've never done one before. And I just, I, this, I don't watch other people's videos on purpose because if I do, I'll pick up their good points and also they'll direct me in a way that maybe I will come up with something maybe a little bit better. And I don't want, I, I like to be able to just lie in bed at night time and let the imagination go crazy. The, I used to do this in the bath. I just lie in the bath, a glass of wine, and well, vodka these days, and just think about how to do these things. Because it's, <clears throat> oh, the serenity. You're on your own, no kind of outside uh, distractions and you can just focus. And that's what I did with this. And it's just, just beautiful. Anyway, that's it. We're going to have the patrons meeting in a couple of minutes. Um, give me time, it's just gone 12. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the show. Let me see, there's nothing else here that I had to talk about. Looking around, looking around. I'm sure that there's people saying, Dave, what about such and such? Oh, the other thing I was gonna say, maybe I did mention, see the color of this versus this. The Jara stain that I've got to do all these with is slightly red, and I think it needs a little bit of yellow in there. I think it will happen with age. I'm gonna go with the Jara, and then when I put the finish on, it will just pull back. The reveal, that's it. Peter, the reveal is the hinge, the hinged lid. Don't you think that's worthy of making everyone wait? I think it's magic. Go away. <laughs> all right. Um, off to the Supercars channel now. Thanks for another great. All right, Eric. Well, thanks again. Look after yourselves. Be nice to each other. And I shall see you all next week. Bye, baby.